Hello and welcome and in today's video I'm going to be showing you the top 10 most common arc tames as in everyone really kind of has these creatures. In at number 10 I'm putting the Baryonyx and for me this is just such a staple and I do see a lot of PvE players I like. This is kind of PvE based as well. I'm not going to bother to do a PvP one because I have no idea what that space is like and you know I don't really want to get everything mixed up and a little bit wrong because um I really am not a uh, you know so somewhat expert in that field whereas I would say I'm pretty well versed in the PvE space as I've been a PvE up player for a while the Baryonyx is just the king of caving though there is really little creatures that are actually best in this and it's considering it spawns on the island it's got such great mobility it's got that spin attack so it can stun creatures up to the side of a Megalodon this really is one of these creatures where it's sort of a must have and for that reason everyone kind of does have these things and just agrees that they're really good and they use them for caving on the island at least on other maps it may differ but especially on the island you're going to find a lot of people taming these things next up i've decided to put the dairy the tickle chicken with its saddle being unlocked at level 69 nice that's not the reason why it is here though this is just one of the best fairy gatherers in the game the moss chops is a great one as well but i find more people are taming fairies than moss chopsers and obviously these creatures are great for the dragon boss fight too and you'll find a lot of people using these things for general combat scenarios it's actually why they're a pretty decent sotf creature when that was actually around because i'm pretty sure on asa sotf that is completely all gone now it's been replaced with bob's tall tales rest in peace had high hopes for it but um i guess it wasn't uh, there to last or if it's still there then um barely any people are really playing it but this creature really is one of those where it's like you sort of need one of these things for those uh, resources that it gathers and it's really great in combat scenarios and people are generally all very on board with this and are like yeah this is a creature which we're going to tame and a lot of people because of that obviously have their xenos and hence why they're on the list. I've decided to chuck the Maywing next as this is one of those creatures where really it is just such a great one for you know all things when it comes to speed and mobility and people do really recognize this a lot of the popular art channels out there are using may wings to get around i know raj clark uses tons of these things all the time and i really am a strong advocate for the may wing they are great creatures and they're just so useful obviously because they don't spawn on the island there's a lack of full use with all players and people say to me well what do you mean by accessibility of a creature you know you buy the game sure you have everything the dlc creatures are locked behind some sort of paywall unless you spawn them in and realistically people tend to tame the creatures that actually spawn on the map and don't just spawn them in especially if you're playing on a server cluster servers obviously you can just go over but most people you know tend to stick to the creatures on said map either way this is still one which a lot of people I think can access because it uh, spawns on Fjorda. They access the portal feeding trough, they can gather berries too. Pretty great swimmers and generally just the best mobility team you can find around. In number 7 I'm putting the Uteranus as you know really what is a boss fight without a UT at the end of the day. This creature really does come in a huge clutch when it comes to boss fighting scenarios like come on this is one of those times where you sort of just need to have one otherwise you're a little bit weird and eccentric in the grand scheme of things conform to what the people are saying with this one because the ut is definitely a tame which i think you all really should be taming without an exception because obviously you get 25 percent extra damage and 25 percent damage reduction with that with the courage rule that these things have and that is just such a buff to your creatures you really just can't say no to that okay there is so much going for the ut in that department and it is just such an insane thing to have even if you have like the most powerful creatures in a given boss fight scenario you just might as well it's like uh, if someone offered you a million a million bucks and, and then they were like right if you want to you can have double you would just take it okay you would rather have the two million than the one million it's self-explanatory and i feel the same way with the ut it's just kind of that creature where just you might as well have it and everyone really does have it that's why it's very common tame next up we've got the pteranodon and this is just such a commercial one really like everyone has got a pteranodon to an extent and they are just so widely used in the pvp space and the pve space and just generally across absolutely everything 
that um, they really do deserve to be on the list as I think they are very common. I haven't really encountered any art players that have seriously actually played the game for at least a couple of hours, if not way, way more that haven't actually tamed themselves off a tarantula. It's self-explanatory if you've only been playing the game for five minutes and you've never touched it since. But if you actually really get into this game, a Tyrannodon will be a tame that you'll be getting at some point, unless you start an aberration on Gen 1. You can still actually get a Tyrannodon on Gen 1, but they won't be useful because you can't ride them, unless you put a little command in the, uh, the config files. It's a little strategy for you single player people on Gen 1 that want to use some flyers, you can change that. There'll be a guide somewhere just to look up like how to enable flyers on Genesis Part 1. That will show you everything. I did that actually on my single player worlds because I just felt like it. But then I just realised the Bloodstalker is just the way to go on that map, and it's just it's so much better than Tyrandol anyway. But this is a much more common tame. The only real difficulty when getting one is going to be the Kaiser Kaiser required for that saddle. It can be a little bit of a drag, and uh, some newer players especially can struggle a little bit with guessing it. But after all, the actual taming of this thing is pretty simple which is just a simple bowler and either club it or give it a few tranks. In number 5 I've decided to put the Thyla as I find this is really one of those creatures where it's like I think everyone is going to be getting one of these at some point. They're just so useful on a map like the islands. There's so much versatility behind them and all of that. I really feel like you sort of need to have one and I see a lot of people with these things. Shadow mains are also quite common and popular but the Thyla is definitely further up there because obviously it spawns on the island and actually from now on all the creatures do actually spawn on the island. It does make a big difference okay because most people are just playing on the island really. I know there are loads of other maps out there but realistically most people have played art on the island map. It is the map that is sort of the most popular yeah rag obviously has more sort of like players at one time and a lot of people just playing on that map but the island overall has definitely had just more players on it at least from the way that i view it especially in single player maybe for servers it's a little bit different and i'm sure the ragnarok servers are more popular than the island servers but with asa stuff as well the island's definitely been quite a popular one because it's been like the only one there until scorch has just released and obviously sparta time as well but um, you know you have to pay for that one now which you didn't have to originally because paid mods. Either way the Thylet can also deal the bleed ability and climb any kind of wall virtual surface. It makes it a really great travelling mount but also very powerful carnivore. Sadly you can't bring it into any boss fights but that's not strictly necessary. This is just really a great creature for travelling around and decimating anything. You already feel like decimating. Continuing on, I've decided to put the Raptor. As I find, come on, a lot of people are going to have Raptors. It's one of those really early tames that you get, obviously, early on in the game. And it's just going to help you out tremendously along the way. And I feel like people are just the type to actually, you know, maybe buckle down and get themselves a Raptor quite early on. Because they're really not too difficult, you simply bowl them and either trank or club it depending on what you want to do. This saddle unlocks before level 20, obviously tranks are level 21, but still there's not a big gap between that and no one can easily net you all the levels to get there in a matter of minutes really. You'll find no difficulty getting to that level I'm sure even on official rates those note runs are going to make that process a uh, much uh, more of a, a breathe let's say and once tamed you got yourself a really fast speedy carnivore that is capable of doing quite a significant amount of damage their weight and stamina and health may not be what you want but for your first carnivore they are definitely going to work for you and they're going to put in the effort if you put in the efforts to maybe even tame a somewhat reasonably high level one in the first place, that's definitely going to help you out and you definitely see the rewards of once you get one, your progress is going to skyrocket. In number three, I'm putting the Stego, the Parasol and the Trike. I'm bundling them all together. Obviously, I've only got the B-roll for the Stego here, but I'm talking about all three widely because they are just so heavily used as berry gatherers around the map and people have reasons for using each of them. The Parasol is probably just the first one you're going to get because it is the easiest of the three to tame. The Trike is significantly faster than the Stego so some people really like it for that reason but I say the Stego is the most preferable one for me because I still have movement speed leveling on my creatures even in ASA and they just gather so many berries and if you level up the stamina to quite an extreme you're really not going to find them the worst in the world especially with the likes of cryopods 
and all of that too you're not going to have the largest difficulty with getting these things about at least i don't and for you that may be different but for me i don't really struggle with the traveling around these creatures i don't find that, that is too much of an issue just because of how many berries they seem to gather and the size of them and just a, a huge versatility for pvp players as well these are great tight soakers so it's the cob enemies too although that is not going to be included on this list because Comparatively, the no many, not many people are going to be taming the carb enemies compared to something like the Sego. The Sego and the Trike and the Parasol are obviously the more popular tames. In at number two, we have got the Argentavis, and this is just one of those creatures where it's like everyone really should tame an RG at some point, and everyone sort of does have an RG in a way. Like, it's one of those creatures where if you don't get it again, you're being a bit of an eccentric, unless obviously the map does not support said flyer. Aberration and Gen 1, of course. Whereas all the other maps, as far as I'm concerned, or at least all the other maps that are native to the game, will allow flyers. I'm not sure about modded maps, there'll probably be some others where flyers are again not allowed on the maps. These creatures though are so great at carrying metal crystal obsidian with 50% weight reduction on them and they can carry so much of a wider range of creatures compared to something like the Pteranodon. Although a little bit more effort is involved with taming, they definitely do give that back in the, the use of this creature. Having a much higher weight and stamina stats with better health and damage too, you really are going to see the benefits in using a creature like this compared to a Pteranodon. Also, on top of that, they uh, their saddle acts as portable smithy, which is really nice, especially if you're doing some cave runs and after Pluto gets your armor. If you've got some metal on the saddle of this thing, you can just nip over to the next cave while repairing your armor with no issues whatsoever. And they also have a regen buff too, so if you kill something and then you eat said dead creature, you're gonna get a nice regen buff, and in a pinch, it really does help out. And in a one, I've decided to put the Rex as, come on, when have you ever really seen someone not tame a Rex in Ark? It's sort of a goal to every beginner in a way that's just set even before you really start playing the game. It's like, oh yeah, the Rex. You know, of course, I'm going to get that at some point. I find it really is one of those where it's like, you actually, like, you, you, if you don't get a Rex, again, you're being a little bit eccentric. And if you do get a Rex, then no, you just follow the rest of the crowd and use these things as boss creatures and generally just carnivores around the map. Although the mobility does lack, that really doesn't matter when it comes to boss fighting. Their health is just so much better than a lot of carnivores that you'll find across the island. They really do deserve to be tamed widely for boss use and when paired with the UT Courage Raw, you're going to get even more out of these creatures and they really are the prime solution for all the maps on the island. While the Megatherium is better for the Broodmother because of that insect uh, rage thing and the um the theory is better for the dragon because of just how harsh it is to carnivores as a general rule the rex is going to be great for any boss fight you throw it into the only exceptions really are the any kind of brew mother fight or any kind of dragon fight or any kind of motor fights which there is only one of I'm saying with any kind of brood mother or dragon because they do appear in sometimes with combination of other uh, creatures there and maybe not quite the best for the manticore but you could still definitely use it obviously don't use it for the moda that's pretty tough explanatory though you know that thing is literally an underwater boss and all and rexes aren't particularly well known for swimming very well and in a sort of number zero spot i've decided to put the dodo because after all isn't this actually just the most common arc tame of all we spawn on a map we punch out a dodo and we feed it some berries and then boom you've tamed yourself a dodo yes obviously it can be used for simple kibble as well and it's quite effective for that i find you know a lot of people are just using this thing as just a first tame and that's very acceptable and it's a thing that just happens in Ark I guess. You you load into the game and Dodo happens and that's probably why I'm trying to put it actually in the uh, the top spot which is I'm gonna call the number one, the number zero spot because number one's already happened. But anyway, that is in today's video. I really hope that you all did enjoy as I definitely did enjoy making this one. As always, comment down below what is the most common art tame in your opinion, and if you didn't agree with this, then make sure to put your tent in the comments below. So I'd love to hear your thoughts, and I'll see you all later.